you know, it's good that we started with phosphorus, but start to look at others as well. So, so what do you think was that switch, Allison? Like, uh, why did people start focusing on it? And, and like, what are they doing now when it comes to considering, let's use phosphorus as an example. Mm -hmm. We'll start there. Um, honestly, when I was working with growers, what really got them thinking that they needed to start focusing on FOSS was honestly their, their soil sample numbers and starting to see some weird coloring in the field, some symptoms showing up. And honestly, if you're looking at a soil sample and your phosphorus levels are sitting at eight parts per million, um, guys get a little concerned and they start wondering, well, I'm putting on the same amount. Why, why is it so low? But then you start, like you said, you start talking about the yields that they're pulling off and maybe they used to pull off a 25 and now they're pulling off a 40 every year. Well, that's changing significantly. So um, conversation around seed safety really came up around there, but guys are starting to get, you know, put some with the seed, get that starter, uh, and then looking at other options of getting it the mid-row blend. Yeah, I know. Like to... Go ahead, Mark. I think too, it's good to add too. I think what's driving the conversation too, with, like I say, was specifically with phosphorus. I think, I think it's a reactive approach um, that has gotten them to realize because they've seen a symptom in the field, they've seen a problem, um, or or know of a, a of a symptom of phosphorus related uh, deficiencies, and they're they're digging deeper into it. And then exactly, yep, you know, they pulled some soil, some soil samples off some of these fields and realized that, geez, uh, um, these numbers are a lot lower than and where they used to be um, and comparing it for maybe a sample they did 10 years ago. And so, yeah, I think, I think uh, it's a re it's a, I've, they visually have seen the symptoms uh, in the field and then gone across and dug a little deeper or, or uh, maybe an agronomist uh, at a retail brought it to their attention or an independent. So. Yeah. And, and I, I, well, what is it about a pound of phosphorus for, for every bushel that they're trying to grow of canola? Um, you need that. And, and when we're traditionally, I would say uh, 10 years ago, guys were putting maybe 20 at, at most 25 pounds of phosphorus down um, and expecting higher yields. I, I, I know myself working with growers, once they started pushing that, say up to the 35, 40, that, that sort of thing, they started to increase their yields pretty significantly as well, as well as increasing and, and doing stuff with their, their maturity. Um, I, I think it, it's important to take a look at it that you start going over that and, and trying to supply the FOSS that, that's needed to grow that crop. Um, it might become a part of a, a management plan, say where you're over applying in non-canola years just to build up that, that amount in the soil um, so that they, there is more there and that it can be in that that pool to be used when that canola is being grown when it's it's having such a high demand for it 